Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today is uh, Wednesday, Wednesday evening, the 9th of September, and I trust that you are well. And we come now to, to say goodbye to this Wednesday and uh, to give God thanks for his goodness in sustaining us. And, of course, to lay all our burdens before him tonight and so that we seek his grace in the coming night. So let's pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my crag, my fortress, and my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice in his temple, and my cry came to his ears. He parted the heavens and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon the cherubim and flew. He came flying on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering round about him, dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice with hailstones and coals of fire. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my, my darkness to be bright. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may the light of your, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Now even on our prayer for this evening. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our evening confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our psalm for this evening. A psalm for this evening. Psalm 136. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. 
his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the sea, the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever, an inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our lowest state, his love endures forever, and freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. Amen. This is one of those psalms with a refrain, as you can see. Um, the refrain, the love, his love endures forever. The word there is chesed, his loving kindness or his eternal mercy upon sinners endures forever. New Testament calls it grace. His grace, his love endures forever. And notice is uh, the psalmist recounts the the creation God's creation God God as the creator and and the refrain of course constantly is that his love endures forever and then the psalmist recounts the deliverance of God for the people and again an, a, a sign of his love in judgment, he came against the Egyptians. His love endures forever. He delivered the people and gave them an inheritance. His love endures forever. So it's, it, this is a, one of those um, uh, evidences in Scripture that the Psalms were, were hymns. Because as you can see, the refrain is like a, a hymn. As you sing one line, you sing the refrain. Um, all right, so Keller's comment, he calls it praised theology. Every verse in this psalm points to truths elsewhere in the Bible. However, sound theology is not an end in itself, but must be turned into praise. Even obedience alone is not enough. Ethical compliance without fervent worship means you've given God your will, but not your heart. Notice, too, that this praise is not solitary. This psalm gives us a glimpse of how many of the psalms were sung responsively in the worship congregate, worshiping congregation. So you must not rest content with biblical knowledge and sound doctrine, but you must turn it all into worship 
that encompasses your whole heart and life. And you must not stop at individual private spirituality either, but must know God in the assembly and worship him as part of our whole Christian community. Amen. So Tim is pointing out that theology must be, must be in praise. Another term is theology must be doxology. Uh, our, the truths that we know about God must turn into praise and, and adoration and worship of God. Uh, if, if what you know about God doesn't spur you and ignite your heart to praise and worship God, then you, what you know about God or what you, you, you is, is limited in its understanding. Not so much, you, you, because everything we know about God should drive us to praise him, to worship him. And so his point here is that every part, this, this entire psalm is a recounting of what we know about God, but within the context of worship. And, of, and, and, and the point, the second point he's making is that um, the, the worship is not an individual worship. It is a corporate worship because the psalm, of course, is, a, is, a, is something that was sung in the building, in the, in the, in the community of the building, but in the community with other people. That's why it's a responsive psalm. One group sings the, the, the theology, another group sings the response, his love endures forever. We could look at this psalm in greater detail because just looking at that refrain, his love endures forever is enough to meditate on for a little while. But let's pray. Lord, in your presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Yet I work harder at my career and even hobbies than at learning to pray. These things are like playing in a mud puddle when you have set a table for me filled with your love, peace, and joy. Lord, teach me to pray and show me a church where we can learn your word and pray together. Amen. Amen. All right. Next, next is our New Testament reading. And our New Testament reading is Mark's Gospel. We are in Mark, Mark chapter 8 from verse 27 to the end. Mark chapter 8 from verse 27, actually from verse 27 to chapter 9, verse 1. Okay. Mark 8, 27. It's, well, there's a number of things going on here, but let's, let's get through it. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Jesus answered, and Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciple, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have the mind you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd out to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet? forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory 
with the holy angels. And he said to them, truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Okay, so um, here we have uh, quite a few small teachings. Uh, as you know, Mark doesn't give you a lot. He just gives you the, the headlines. For example, the first one where Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. In Matthew's Gospel, it's a much fuller explanation of this incident, but that's okay. Uh, Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist and prophets and so on. What about you, he said. And Peter said, you are the Messiah. Now that is all Mark, Mark gives us. And of course, we know that in Matthew's gospel, Peter says something much fuller. And Jesus responded in, a, in even uh, um, uh, um, to Peter himself and said, you are Peter. You are the rock and I will build my church and all that. Mark doesn't give us any of that. Mark simply says, Peter answered, you are the Messiah. And Jesus said, warned them not to tell anyone about him. So Mark just gives you the, the headline. Then that, that no, no more detail. That's it. Peter confessed an amazing truth. And then we move on. You see, Mark is coming to something else because he's trying to give us the next bit. Because Despite what Peter just said, then Jesus began to talk about his death and his suffering and he's going to be handed over and he's going to be and he's going to suffer and die. And Peter said, no, <laughs> that will not happen. Peter is rebuking our Lord. The audacity. Yeah? And and our Lord, of course, turned to Peter. And severely rebuked him. So, so you have this juxtaposition. You have this, this contrast, as it were. So in the first bit, Jesus said, who do people say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ. And Jesus said, great. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't give him the rest of the information. He just says, that is great. Peter made a great statement of faith. And then, two minutes later, Jesus points out that Peter allows the devil to inspire him to say some stupid things. Isn't that amazing? You and I know from the Matthew's Gospel that in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit revealed this to you, Peter. You know, God tells you this. And then in a few moments, the devil tells you this, Peter. So, so here you have uh, one person within a few minutes, as it were, who, who, was, who could say something so lofty and so truthful, you are the Messiah. Not many people grasped that. Not many people understood that. Many people just thought Jesus was a great rabbi and a great teacher. It takes a certain amount of mind and thinking to connect the dots and realize this man is not just an ordinary rabbi. He, he is the long-awaited Messiah of the Old Testament. And Peter saw this. But then a few moments later, Peter allowed the devil to put words in his mouth. And this is just a reminder to us how frail and how, how weak we are. And the one moment we could be praising God with the, with the most lofty of words. And the next moment we allow the devil to use us in the most debased of deeds. So here, Jesus rebuked Peter. On the one hand, Jesus commended Peter. Here, Jesus rebuked him. Get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And then the last bit where Jesus then now says, listen, people, if anyone wants to follow me, it is not going to be an easy road. The Christian life is not a bed of roses. It's not going to be an easy life. And I can say that any stronger. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Deny self. Deny self-centeredness. 
deny self-aggrandizement, deny selfish desires, deny self, and be willing to die. Because that's what taking up the cross means. Taking up the cross it means be willing to carry your cross to the place of execution. And Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple unless you are willing to deny yourself. Uh, deny yourself the, 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 the comforts, the, the, the pleasures, the, whatever it is that you love. So deny yourself and then be willing to lay down your love for me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever, whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the world and lose their soul? And, and so on. So there you have it. The cost of what it means to follow Jesus. If it doesn't cost you something... The question is whether or not you're truly following Jesus. If, you, if, you're, you, if you're not denying self, if you are not prepared to be willing to die for Christ and for the sake of the gospel, literally die. If you do not put an end to your own selfish desires, it, being a Christian will cost you. It will cost us certain things. It may cost you the comforts that you love so much. It may cost you money and finances. It may cost you even health. But it, it needs to be costly. It's, so many people think Christianity is coming into comfort. Jesus, Jesus did not promise us comfort in this life. He promised us a cross. And unless we are willing to do that, we are not ready for the kingdom. And that those are sober words for us to meditate on tonight as we say goodbye to this day. So let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we give you thanks for the good news that you have brought to us as sinners. You love us despite ourselves, despite the fact that we are sinners, despite the fact that we are like Peter. And the one moment we can be praising you with our tongues, we can be showing uh, lofty, making lofty statements about you. And in the next moment, we can allow the enemy to take charge of our hearts and use us in horrible ways. And so Lord, we we pray that you will help us in our own frailty, in our own fallenness, in our own weakness, that you will grant us your grace to be strong. And Lord, again, as we think about the cost of what it means to be a Christian tonight, Lord, we are nowhere. When we look at our own hearts, we are nowhere near what this means. When we think of the early Christians and what they what they endure for the sake of the gospel. We do not, for the most part, most of us don't endure anything near that. And the question is, if we, if it does come to it, that we, that we have to die for the, for the sake of the gospel, how many of us are willing? How many of us are willing? Lord, we think of our own hearts and we don't know but Lord, help us, we pray. We believe, help our unbelief. Lord, help us to be able to come to that place where being a disciple of Christ will cost us in ways that we, we, we don't even understand. And so Lord, help us, we pray, even as we, as we finish this day, as we come to the end of this day, Lord, we ask that you will grant us grace to be able to endure whatever, whatever denial of self means. Help us to be able to do this.
for your sake and for the sake of the gospel. As so the Lord, we, 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 we draw this day to a close and we ask, oh dear God, our Father, that you'll be with us tonight. Remember those who are sick. Remember, Lord, in your mercy, those who are in pain. Remember, O oh Lord, in your mercy, those who are unemployed. Remember in your mercy, O oh Lord, those who are suffering in any way tonight, emotional suffering, mental suffering, physical suffering. Remember them, Lord. Remember tonight liberty and dawn. Lord, remember them, especially tonight, we pray, and so many others in our own community, in our own hearts. Remember them, Lord, in your love, in your faithfulness, in your loving kindness. And so, Lord, hear our prayer tonight. As we say goodbye to this day, we give you thanks, and we lay our burdens before you. We cast all our cares on you because you care for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. O the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, on, on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Have mercy on this sinful world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the glory and the power are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's listen to our theme song as we say good night for tonight. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and restful night tonight. Have a blessed night, sisters and brothers.